Hello, good afternoon, and you're very welcome to Cologne in Germany, to the Lanxess Arena. 20,000 fans awaiting this, the gold medal match, the one no one thought could happen between HBC Nantes and Montpellier handball. Well, we had a riveting uh, third place game, I have to say, a little bit earlier, between uh, last year's finalists, Paris and Vardar, and it ended in a one goal victory for Paris. These are the scores from yesterday. Nantes beat Paris 32-28 in the first semi-final, second semi-final, Montpellier one by one. That's why they're here. And today, like I said, Paris Saint-Germain 29, Vardar 28 means that no matter what happens in this game, it'll be a first, second and third for French teams at the Velux EHF Final Four. Unbelievable to think. But what's more unbelievable is the fairy story of both these teams. 2003, Montpellier won the Champions League, but they've been close a couple of times since to getting to the final, but uh, not in the last number of years. These guys, it's only their second season in the Champions League, and yesterday, this is what they did to Paris. Nicolas Claire, great centre player, and Tourna, Nicolas Tourna, he was the difference between the two teams. Very well rated in France, the 24-year-old, but he really, he really did damage to this Paris team yesterday. Abalo and Co did the best they could, but I can't labour this point enough. There's absolutely no way that um, anyone thought that no one could beat Paris by four. Great action, and in the end, the man to thank for the gap and how big the victory was, was in attack, Tourna, but in defence, the goalkeeper, Tourna. He was sensational. OK, didn't get that one, but uh, when the chips were down, and Paris came within one, he was absolutely brilliant. That was save number one. Save number two. And, I mean, that's against Mikkel Hansen. That is just tremendous. And there you see what it meant to the fans. And then the Ocas breaks through with this one. And that's the nail in the coffin. But this is the cherry on the cake. Cyril Dumoulin, the windmill, does it again. And then... Just to really add insult to injury, Dominic Klein. Make sure that Nantes is going to the final and Paris is going to the bronze medal match. Never before has it happened that three French teams made it to the final four, and never before has it happened that two French teams made it to the final. Incredible, really. And incredible, all the more incredible when you think that just over 10 years ago, these guys are playing in second division in France, in the French League. And here they are arriving a little bit earlier on today, 5-4. to four. So they've been here quite a while. Dumoulin walking in. Guillaume, uh, the line player, big, strong guy in there. Stepanchic just walking past them. Tournal, look at the size of them. Difficult to shift in on the line. Lazarov came from Barcelona last season. Balaguer came from Barcelona so long ago. Claire, 30 years of age now, but a wonderful centre player. HPC Nantes, 1953, they've been set up, but like I said, only in the last 10 years or so that they've really been playing at the big table in France in the first division and only their second ever season in the Champions League. They did host the HF Cup twice, didn't win it, and they will be playing in the same jerseys as yesterday. That kind of... Um, well, colour isn't my main point, to be honest with you. They have a purple sleeve, a mustard sleeve, and then it's kind of... Is it brown? I don't know. But whatever it is, they're good. Back into the arena now. That is the team sheet. No changes from yesterday that I can see. But this team is... Uh, one of the things everyone says about them, uh, French media and so on, is that they really are a band of brothers. They're a team, and uh, a really showed yesterday against the superstars of Paris. 
quite a quite a tough warm up they have uh, Nantes and they're backed by all those fans. well I mean there's empty seats there at the moment but when it's full every single one of them wearing the purple t-shirt to make Ashtori their little bit of brand uh, to make history this is the Montpellier team and if uh, Tourna is the line player that's important down one end for Nantes this guy Wolverine Fabregas, he is important for the Montpellier team. Still only 21 years of age. I think he's moving to Barcelona. I don't know whether it's next season or soon, but he is a really good player. The truck, first ever Lithuanian to play in the Champions League, and they beat the champions harder yesterday. And it was a very close game, but what they did was they ran and they ran and they ran and they ran, Montpellier, and they never stopped running until the final whistle. And they needed every single second of the game to get the win. He was instrumental yesterday, Digu. Really, really important for them, seven goals. Portner didn't play a lot, but when he did, made that penalty save. As I said, Digu, brilliant yesterday, seven goals. Had his misses, of course, but um, they're just non-stop action. This guy was tremendous. Missed that one. I keep saying he was tremendous just to, just after they missed a the goal, but he really was tremendous. Um, Vincent Gerard didn't have the best percentages ever in his career, but uh, vital stops at vital times. And that was what Richardson brought to the party yesterday. He's only 21 years of age, and he's a really, really top player already. And uh, it was really, really tight in the end uh, for this Montpellier team. They came out on top by one goal, but Varder never really gave them the chance. A lot was down to Corozan. He really scored so many top goals coming towards the end. Digu outfoxing them all, but won a quick one from the centre line. And this was the Stoilov goal that tied it up at 27 apiece. And then little Diego Simone, quiet all day, stepped up for one of the specials. And then this from Borosan, wide of the mark. And that meant that Montpellier, the underdogs in semi final two, were going forward to meet Nantes, the underdogs from semi final one. So it's the underdogs final. If I was the music guy here today, I'm playing Hounds of Love by Kate Bush. Or You Ain't Nothing But a Hound Dog by Elvis. It's the underdogs final. It's gotta be a dog. Maybe a bit of Snoop Doggy Dog, is he still called that? Snoop Dog, the Snooper. I don't know anymore. So here was the arrival of Montpellier. Uh, by the way, yesterday I told you that they trained of the morning of the semi-final. They trained again this morning at 11 o'clock. What? I, I, I don't know how they can run for 60 minutes. And they trained again this morning, and they still look fresh as daisies. Look at that. Vilmino, only young Killian coming in, then Gerard, the truck. Melvin Richardson, some of the uh, team officials, of course. Montpellier, Méditerranée, Métropole. You're never going to hear a better French accent unless you switch over to TV, which I hope you don't do. White shirts, white shorts, that's what they're playing in today. Port, great player, really a great player. I'm surprised Paris hasn't tried to buy him. I really think he could be a really good addition to that team. I'm, not, I'm just saying why they've never approached him, because he really is, uh, he's a wonderful right back. So there, the jerseys hanging. And these are the players warming up. Vid Kaptichnik, uh, the Slovenian, always one to watch out for. Baptiste Bonfon, number 24. Jean-Louis Faustin, they played, uh, he played up high in the 5-1 yesterday, not much in attack because, of course, they have Diego Simone, the Argentinian. Uh, Vincent Gerard, I would expect a huge game for him today because he's been brilliant all season. They've beaten the Spanish champions. Looks like Flensburg will be the German champions. They beat them, and yesterday they beat the Macedonian champions and the current Champions League champions. So they are on a major roll. And as one of them said, hey, by the way, Tom, we, meet, we beat the Portuguese champions. We beat the uh, Belarusian champions. We're beating champions all season. 
that's uh, that's the confidence this team has. Well, Fabregas, there's going to be some fight in on the line for him today and uh, Tourna at the other end. But then there's a player now, Dominic Klein, released by Kiel, two-year contract uh, to end his career. We're for the final game of the season, and this is not only final game of the season, but the final game of the Champions League for Dominic Klein, the legendary player. So, Dominic, you are here with HBC Nantes. What are your feelings for before this special game for you? Um, of course, it's special for me because it's not that um, match what you think it's normal because uh, it's the end of the career and um, then it's the final. So hopefully, um, yeah, we have the same support like yesterday and uh, we will keep it. Your opponent is very well known, uh, Montpellier. So what do you think, what can decide in this game? Okay. Maybe the last week we played in the in the season against each other and we lost there. So directly after this match, I have this uh, thinking in my every every lose it's something positive. So maybe today we we have this on our side in our mind. But what we did last uh, yesterday and in the last match here, that emotions we have here in the arena and that's our best positive things. For you as a German, this is a special place to play to play this final game. So what would you like to say your final words for German fans? I'm just thankful for everything what I get in my career. And is this the last stage, the last uh, arena, what I'm in my what I can imagine for the last match? Yeah, hopefully with a trophy at the end. The Velux CHF final four and the final game is upon us and we have Nicola Portner from Montpellier on ball, the goalkeeper. So Nicola, tell us what were the last hours before the final game? How did you spend them? What is the atmosphere in the team right now? Well, uh, uh, it's something special, of course. Uh, everyone is focused. Um, we, we didn't change anything uh, specifically in our preparation. We didn't uh, just have uh, much time uh, because we played the second game, so the, the rest uh, was a bit uh, shorter than um, as, as, as usual. But uh, yeah, I think uh, just remain focused and uh, do the job. If you were right, you could become the first Swiss to claim the Champions League trophy. So what will decide so you can achieve it? What you have to do against Nantes? Well, uh, it will be difficult, of course. Uh, it's an amazing team. Uh, they have uh, really, really good players uh, in their roster. Um, everything is open. It will be uh, mental, of course. Uh, a bit of uh, luck, uh, tactics, everything. Uh, um, will be a bit mixed, uh, mixed uh, of, of that, so uh, we will see at the end, but um, it will be a tough game for sure. Yeah, he's, he's dead right, it's going to be a tough game. And interesting that Dominic said they only played uh, last week in the French League in Montpellier, and I think it might have been a four or five goal defeat, I can't remember. I remember looking at the score at the time, but thinking it wasn't worth writing down because there's no way these two are going to face each other. Well, there you go, I'm wrong. Benetjev Champions League season, 12 wins for Nantes, 13 for Montpellier, four draws and uh, three losses each. Both debutants, which we all knew. Um, with the 2018 edition, the last five EHF Champions League champions will come from five different countries. That's nice. Okay, 1,800 hours is the time you have to keep in mind if you want to make a cup of tea. Well, you don't have to leave us, but... Uh, the players are just leaving the court, which means it must be almost time for chapter four of the greatest story ever told. The opening show is coming up. Look at him. They did say in the locker room show he never comes into the locker room. He just sits out, he waits, he relaxes, no problem. Klein is still milking the crowd, typical. Doesn't want to go until it's all over. And down the other end, Gigu doesn't want to leave. The two left wingers as uh, the purple flags and the purple T-shirts are shown. And then you've got uh, the Montpellier fans, the blue foxes down the other end. Oh, that's a great shot. Look at that. Purple down one end on the right, white down the other end on the left. And both of them singing La Marseillaise to each other. Only in handball. Everybody mixing together, brilliant. I feel I feel like I should have stood uh, should have stood up for that. I, I didn't do it. Is that a mortal sin? 
Yeah. Annette Sattler is about to introduce, I think, the uh, the final show, which is uh, about to get underway. Wow, amazing stuff in the And even the uh, hall announcer mentions it. 15 minutes to go until the throw off. And am I about to see Welchley Arms come onto the court? I'm seeing uh, music, instruments coming on, drums, keyboards, you name it. And of course, they've had that great song Sanctuary, which uh, we've heard all over EHF TV. So, yeah, he said, you sang so beautifully, let's do some more. Time for me to uh, shut up and uh, watch exactly what might happen here as the crowd breaks into song. We're bringing you live coverage of the gold medal match in 15 minutes time. Do stay with us. Boys and girls, we love you, monsieur. It's time for the final. So one more time, put your hands together for the finalists. Put your hands together for not Evil Then give me a yes. If you're ready, then give me a we. Are you ready? And in French? Here is the opening show. Enjoy ball spectacle. I've been waiting for this. Welshly arms, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy. Pages from a magazine Been looking for the answer Ever since we were 17 You know the truth could be a weapon To fight this world of ill intention A new answer to the same question How many times will you learn the same lesson? I think they got it all wrong And we just gotta hold on Doing here ain't 
That is a great tune. Great. This is my sanctuary. I think it's just called Sanctuary, but it's brilliant. Welshly Arms. Chapter four, the quest for glory. Well, that's what's today, isn't it? Montpellier against Snort. Coming up in about six minutes time.
Please welcome Marie Chef Flackens and the referees for this final. Well, I have to say, if you're a Nantes fan or you're a Montpellier fan, you have got butterflies in the tummy. If I'm not mistaken, the French word for butterflies is papillon. Papillon dans l'estomac. Referees for today, with no Referees papillon in l'estomac, is Oscar and Angel uh, from Spain. There's Angel on the left, Oscar on the right. And uh, we wish them the best of luck. Two of the top referees in the world, without a shadow of a doubt. And I have to say, all the young people, the boys and girls that have been involved with the flags and the introductions and presentation have been absolutely wonderful. A credit to their parents and a credit to whatever sporting organisation they're a part of. So well done to all of them as well. So Nantes designated the home team. They will be the first to introduce to us. Filio the Rock, the great defender, nine years at the club he's been. Leads on the team, and then Cyril Dumoulin, then Romain Lagarde, then it's Rio, the line player. Behind him comes Jokas. One of the, well, his twin is not here, but he is an identical twin. Then comes Nicolas Claire, then comes Dominic Klein to huge applause from the crowd, then it comes Tesmalbeck, then Tourna, then comes uh, Julien Emonet, good little left winger as well, then comes Jelko Matulic, great right winger, then Arnaud Sifer, the second oldest at 39 years of age here. Behind him comes Lazarov, he's not too much younger than that actually, then Gurvindo, he's high-fiving all the way along, then comes Palaguer, they're a bit excited. They don't want to injure themselves before they start the game. Then Espenly Hansen. And uh, that's an for you. So now, the other French team. Ladies and gentlemen, Dame Monsieur, make some noise for Montpellier and Paul. So the Montpellier team will be led in, I presume, by uh, Michel Pigou. Here's the moment. The shadows are lengthening. And we're ready to go. And here's the captain, wearing number 14. Welcome, Miguel Gigou. Miguel Gigou leads on the team to Montpellier. There he is, 36 years of age. This guy runs like he's 16. Then uh, Vincent Gerard, then comes Diego Simone. Kylian Villino, the center player behind, then uh, Theophile Cose, Cose, who knows? Jonas Kukanovicius, the truck. Mikhail Gigi already out, then Nicola Pochner. Uh, behind the Swiss goalkeeper comes. Melvin Richardson, and behind him comes Ben Kapitznik, another one of the old guys. Champions League winner back in 2007, Ben. He's 33, and he's an old man on this team. Unbelievable when you think about it. Then comes uh, Baptiste Pompon, then comes uh, Jean-Luc Faustin, Fabregas, then uh, Valentin Porte. Bingo. And then we have Susi, the left back, and Mamdou, the line player. And Patrice Canaille gets uh, a nice mention from the hall announcers. Two coaches today, of course, for Nantes, Thierry Anti, and for Montpellier is Patrice Canaille, himself a Champions League winning coach back in 2003 with Montpellier. He's been there for so, so long. So that's pretty much all the intros done as we move along the line. There is little Diego, Portner, Girard, 
Figu. Then the flags, the two referees, Oscar uh, Ralu and Angel Sabroso. And now the flag of Nantes, designated, as I said, the home team today. And there's the Rock. I'll tell you, see that guy there? Rock for Leo. He is a tough, tough man. He is so tough and yet so positive. I love that. It's great to see. And finally, Dominic Klein always stands at the end of the line. No matter what number he has, he's always number nine. But stands at the end of the line. It's a superstitious thing, I think, you know? Well, there's the other captain. Rob Finney on one side, Gigo on the other. One, a really tough defender, Rob Finney. And the other, a classy uh, left winger, from centre player, attacker. Annette Sattler with the fair play speech. And in the interest of the sport of handball, we kindly request you, the spectators, to support your team in a fair manner and to show positive attitudes towards all participants and spectators. We are only moments away from the throw-in. The players high-five each other, move along the line. It is the 27th of May, 2018. It's the Lanxess Arena Cologne. It is the gold medal match between Nantes, you see on your screens there, and Montpellier. It's the 25th anniversary of the Champions League. And that, my friends, is a moment in time. And in this moment in time, if you can win the gold medal, if two French teams are playing against each other, know each other so well, that is momentous. So the players, we feel we know them already. We've seen so much of them this weekend. As uh, we move through the team announcement, Kirill Lazarov, what a great player the Macedonians been, and no doubt he will be cheered on by all the Vardo fans. And finally, someone for the Scandinavians to get behind, Eskimo Lee Hansen, the Norwegian. Starting lineup names itself. Don't get a chance to say it yet. Montpellier next, the two goalkeepers up first, and then Diego Simone. Only 33 goals in the Champions League this season. But they've been absolutely, he's been brilliant for them. Uh, this guy, incredible, Chukanovic. Uh, Gigu, 36, 54 goals, 60 goals now for Melvin Richardson coming into this final. BB, 25 years of age, doesn't get an awful lot of court time because. Kanae likes to play with seven or eight players. That's it. He doesn't change that much. His starting lineup uh, almost names itself. Looks like uh, Montpellier starting with the ball. At least they have one right at the moment. Down their end. Here's the uh, matchups to look out for. Star player, Tuna, 24 years of age, 76 goals. Fabregas, 26 goals, 21 years of age. And then right back, Kirill Lazarov, 47 goals this season. And right back, he's probably at the end of his career. He wouldn't, wouldn't thank me for saying that, but at the start of his career, 21 goals, Melvin Richardson. It's actually known for starting with the ball, so in defence, from left to right, known playing from left to right. It is Gigu, the truck, Fabregas, Bocht, and it is Kapticnik on the right wing. There is... And a up close and personal. And they're going to play 5-1, and it's first down, he's in the 5-1. So, playing from right to left in the dark strip is Montpellier. It's Dumoulin goal. Did I say girl? Dumoulin goal. It's Klein, Jokas, Claire in the centre, Gerbindo on the right back. On the right wing is Balaguer, and Tourna, exactly as you would have thought. Bonne chance à tous. Good luck to all. No medal match. It's underway. 2018. They look to the final four. Hold on to your seats. It's going to be a bumpy ride, this one. Fabregas hits him on the way through. Nothing more than the nine metres as the referee. Nine, first touch of the ball to the Elkis again. One on one with Fabregas. Tries to go, it's stolen by Gigu. Gigu goes, left-handed basketball style, keeps running. Goes, gets a penalty, knew exactly what he was doing there. And Gorbindo is off for two minutes. 
Gigu knew exactly what he was doing there. Watch him just pull his hand across Gigu right at the last second. Just watch this. There. Knows exactly what he's doing. And uh, sees him coming. Look. Knows. And goes, gets the penalty. Clever play. The window falls for it. Should be more experienced. So power play. Immediately after 48 seconds, Kapticznik versus Jumula. Oh, yeah. Opening goal in the final is the bid start. Love Star Wars, this guy. Love Kapticznik. Loves, loves Star Wars. Tries to use the force. I'm not kidding you. 101 uh, kilometers an hour says he had a bit of force behind that, right? 1 0. Montpellier leading. And on comes Lagarde. Empty goal. Oh, the Ocas. Now that's what I want to see today. Ball is already broken. Over the top. No goal from the center shot. And look how quick New Milan was on. They had to get it high to get it over him. Didn't manage it. Post down, went for it, and look at Dumoulin. Oh, he was going to get that, you know. So, there. Lagarde, Klein. Jokas again. Lagarde, oh, whoopee goals on the wrong side of the court for a right-hander, but he still scores it. Two to one, no. Fustan comes off, Simone comes on, and a player down, they've done this. No chance. Oh, Vincent Gerard, two to one. Bort, Bort facing the rock, shot. Save, rebound, Fabregas gets the rebound, scores the goal. I'm going to say right now we're getting over 60 goals in this final. Good save, right down his throat with the rebound, picked up by Ludovic. And he makes no mistake from the six metre line. So, Gurbindo back on, it's even Stevens in the score, and it's even Stevens on players. Miocas again tries to break through, attacker foul, says Angel, and lets us know with a a punch into the hand, here's the truck. Plays it to Gigu, plays it to Faustin, he stays on. Now, Gigu again in the left-back position, always changing. Here comes the truck, here comes Port, Port's through! Doesn't even look as he shoots. Cyril Dumoulin reads it, there, breaks it, there, to Gurbindo. Gurbindo waits, looks, settles it down again. Ball with Claire, ball with Gurbindo, Gurbindo, oh, he's over the arm of uh, Fabregas. Fabregas is in trouble. Caution for him. Yellow card, calm down, says the referee. And he's dead right. Only two minutes gone in the game. 3.43, apologies. Gets him around the neck. It's going to be nine metres, nothing more. 2-2 two -two the score. Ball. Balaguer. Oh, my goodness, the Ocas. No chance. And did you see the little touch on the knee to, uh, uh, from Monti to Entrellas there? Yeah. It's OK, everything's good. Here we go. Good captain's A little bit of something going on. Oscar says no more. He's a prison officer, you know, Oscar Alou. Yeah, he don't take no message from anybody. And, he, and, and when he looks at you, he's got these, like, lasers in his eyes, the referee. There will be no messing in this final today. Yeah, there might be some messing, but the referees have spotted. Here we go. 122 kilometers per hour, and then 120 from Jokas. Incredible. Here comes Simone. Simone, one on one. Breaks past Tuna. Lazy from Tuna. Ball is out with Kigu. Ball is with the truck. The truck plays it to Simone. Sidesteps. Lovely ball. Great defense from Balaguer out there. That is fantastic. Balaguer knocks it out over the sideline. No. Nine minute ball says the referee. Back with Tukanovicius again. Now it's Simone. Now with Bok. 3 2 to score. Nolte ahead. Simone, Bort, ball to the truck, the hand is up and pass the play, they got over something, goes into Diego. 
free throw. Good decision. A little bit of a tug on Diego Simone there. Look at the speed the ball is moving. It's never, it's always in play, always moving. A little tug there from Klein, just puts him off. I think they've only got one pass, one shot here. We'll soon see. We go for the truck, the hand is still up. He's got to go for something, he tries to break past. Time call by the referee. Right, pass of play. Now, Claire breaks it to the Ocas. One on one with Park. No, into two. Nah! Super save already for Vincent Gerard. Needed that early doors in the game. Oh, Thierry on T can't believe that. Tourna, who's absolutely brilliant. Lovely. Grow! Dumoulin! Ball breaks! Balaga! Scores! 4 to 2. And Cyril Dumoulin, look at this. Oh, he gets the full force in the face. They don't even look around, they just play it. Then they complain. But in the meantime, Balaguer, the Spaniard, has scored. And Klein whistles to get a bit more from the crowd. They're a defence counter-attack team. They showed wide just there. Comes this near side with Diego Simone. Bok is in the centre. Expect that change. Here he is in the wraparound. Now the change. Now the truck plays it on to Simone. Looks for Bok. Bok doesn't even look at Captain It goes back to the centre again. Back to Chukanovic. Back to Simone. Back to Bok. Look at the speed of the ball. Ball into Fabregas. Brilliant. Brilliant. Absolutely super play. Never stopped moving. Toward the defence. Left, right, left, and right again. Luna has in trouble. Getting a yellow card on the halfway line. In the meantime, Fabregas has scored again. And it's 4 3. 52 he is. Lucas 1 1, sidestep, look at the ball, look at the speed. It's held by the jersey, Klein picks it up. Klein, back to Diokas. Diokas, will he go alone? No, plays it behind the back, it's a duel now! Oh, another great save from Girard! And stolen over the far side by Gigou. And is it not with the ball it is? Corbindo's got it, plays it back to Claire. We're only seven minutes into the game, and already it's a classic. There goes ball to Corbindo, save again, but a penalty called. And a chance to take a sip of water and just relax. Lazarov steps forward. Facing Gerard. Moves his foot, but it doesn't matter. Goal counts. Five to three, no lead. Goal called the short. Diego Simone called on. And that's what it means to the no fans. No chance, uh, Gerard. The power that he generates, uh, Lazarov, from shots like that is just incredible. And precision as well. Chikanovic is lost. He's lost it. Stolen. No. Simone, the spin! Oh, amazing! He's a magician, that boy! What a goal! Lying down! on his side. Clear with the ball, five to four. Oh, Dumoulin in front of me, can't believe that, he's absolutely disgusted. Up goes Balaguer, and out comes the leg in the hand of Vincent Gerard, the ball's already broken to the halfway line. The ball is with Simone. Calls for Gigou, Gigou comes around, here he goes. Now, yeah, well, Gigou has that ball in the middle, with these two guys, now the rock comes out on him. Goes against Gigu, ball to Simone, Simone to Chukanovicius. Looked like he stepped, lost ball into, uh, it's just everywhere. Here is Chukanovicius again, off the post, and it's uh, null ball. Didn't know what they were doing there, it was going left, right, left, right. But anyway, there, Corbindo, Corbindo held up. And free throw. 
50% shot efficiency for Nantes, to only 50% for Montpellier. But Montpellier don't care. They would just take shot after shot after shot, and uh, they'll play with speed, and somewhere along the line, they'll be able to shout. Ball to Tona, back out to Govindo. Keep you watching. Now, ball back to Niokas. Niokas, what will he do? Sidestep, up in the air, ball back, now stolen by Gigu. They knew that move was coming. Simone is looking. Who can he find? He finds, finds Fabregas all alone in the middle. Very clever play. Five to five. And this game is not even 10 minutes old. And we've got 10 goals and pace to burn in it. Steal from Gigu is brilliant. And now, Simone heads up handball. Lovely pass. Well, he knew Fabregas was all alone. Just throw it up, he's going to get it. Nine metre free for Nantes. Yeah. So the window nailed, though, they've called it. They've called an attacker foul. but it's a seven meter throw and a two minute suspension for Niokas for, for taking him down. Two minute suspension, by And it's correct decision, oh, great balance, still got the shot away. Super save by Jumunam, but Niokas is in trouble. He's gone for two minutes, another power play for Montpellier. And Vid Kapticnik steps forward. Ah, oh, scores it. And they take the lead again, 6-5. Darth Vidder. That's what we're going to call him from now on. No chance to move around there. Klein hasn't got a look at the ball yet out there in the left wing. A lot of stuff going through the middle. Empty goal, of course, uh, as they bring on Lagarde this time in the left back position. I've been impressed with him, I have to say. He's only 21 years of age, but I like him a lot. Balaguer, what a ball. Out to Lagarde, didn't fancy it himself. Corbindo, I, I apologise, this is Balaguer, and Balaguer scores it. It was Corbindo, great ball out to Lagarde. But look at how quickly Montpellier break. Here's uh, Richardson, Kapticnik, Hort is off. Faustin is on, Faustin stays in the middle, no chance for Diego Simonet to come on, Faustin breaks through, a little pirouette, a little carousel on his own, spins past the middle player and shoots it through, look at that pass Claire, like he wasn't there, 7-6. Ah, brilliant penalty, definitely. Two minutes suspension for Melvin Richardson, Melvin, and it's got to be a, it's got to be a seven meter. So now it's even Stevens of the court in terms of players. Look at this lovely ball into Tourna, and Richardson has him, and he's pulling him down. Tourna, no chance to turn. They're only giving a nine meter. It's not a penalty because he had to turn. So now, still an empty goal for Nantes, but they play six on five. Gurbindo, back to Gurbindo again, ball to Lagarde, ball to Claire, is it blah, it's slow, but it gets to Balaguer in the end, and he scores. Seven to seven. Same movement again, and they managed to get the ball to Balaguer. It was a little bit slow in coming, but he was moving. No chance, Gigu, who decides better than to try and give a little elbow into the midriff of uh, the winger shooting. Thought about it, but knew these referees wouldn't miss that in a million years. So, it's 6v6 again on court, but it's empty goal for Montpellier. 
two minutes suspension is over for null. As you see now in the center, now in the left back position, his preferred position. Diego Simone, box. Here comes Susi. What can he do? Goes parallel. Plays it to Simone. Needed to go direct there, but didn't bother. Here he goes. Now he does. And he scores. So, eight to seven while Gio is warming up here on front of me, just behind the bench. He must be coming on. Uh, the rock is off. There's uh, the shot from Susi. Save. Igu is gone. Igu plays it to nobody in particular. There's a dive for the ball. Oh, Gurpindo, that was, that was endeavour, has to be said. And they're saying there was a foul here on Igu. A correct decision. Claire just got a nip at him there. But uh, I'll tell you, Gurpindo was winning that ball no matter what. As you see. 8-7, Montpellier leading, and only 10 seconds left on their power play against them. Still an empty goal. Give you those stats now in a moment. Pocht, Simone. Ball to Gigu. Fabregas far, far away. Now he's on the way around. Here he comes. Simone plays it to him. To Pocht, to Susi. To Pocht, out goes Turnas. Spun past him again. Steps, it seems to me, but a great save by Cyril Dumoulin. And he's done well at the start of this game. He was at 20%, that'll take it up again. 36% save ratio was Vincent Gérard. Simone, Richardson, as you see, Simone moves in second line. Gigu looks at him, then doesn't take the bait, and then breaks through on his own and scores on his own. Two-goal lead, Garfindo and he have a tangle of legs, but up gets Gigu, who's up quickly. Claire with the ball, Dustin Fancy giving it out to the wing. Lagar turns, that's oh, it's another great save, nothing since the referee. Play on, look at the speed of this again. Simone, Fabregas, goal! And three-goal lead and a timeout for sure will be called by Nantes very, very shortly. Off comes to Onar. He's uh, puffing, I have to say. Lagarde like, oh, should have done better, but a good save by Gerard. And look at Simone, just looks up. Fabregas is gone. And a timeout call. The difference between Fabregas and Tourna. Fabregas is super fit. Tourna, great line player. Can't run that quickly. Timeout launch. Let's listen to the coach. Oh. Là, on est trop précipité. On est précipité. On veut à chaque fois vite marquer le but. On ferait mieux de se concentrer sur la défense. En défense, on est trop écarté. On est trop écarté. On n'est pas mobile. On est statique. Ils arrivent à se profiler partout. Il faut flotter côté balle. Il faut jouer la défense. Il faut pas jouer la rupture de rythme. Ne te jette pas. Rupture de rythme. Quand je gagne l'intérieur, les arrières. Venez avec moi, comme je vous ai dit. Venez pour quitter ce rideau quand je gagne l'intérieur. Et ce jour, écarte comme un ailier. Si il y a des calades, tu dois être moins de tourner. Oh, on, on, on durcit un peu la défense. Allez, 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 Time out was for Nantes. The coach said we're too static in defence. Got a move. Anthony more mobile. Timolan, 23% save ratio. Vincent Gérard, 42% save ratio. Four goals for Fabregas. Three for Balaguer. There. Lagarde. Lagarde again. Gio in on the line, ball behind the back to the window, now to Claire, and now they're moving. Ball with uh, Claire in the middle, what's he going to do? Ball is out, hit like half again, goes for the shot, saved by Vincent Gerard. Here Lazarov preparing, warming up on the sideline, Claire with the ball again, Gio trying to make a nuisance of himself. Down goes Claire, under pressure from Tukanovicius. Ball. That's a super ball. Dominic Klein saved by 
Vincent Gerard. Klein went for his favorite shot. Gerard read it. Ball is in. No, stolen. Gio is hit by Gigu. Ball to oh, Someone's gone down in an absolute heap. Bid Kaptinski save. Nothing says the referee. The bang. I heard. I heard it all the way down here. Klein went down under pressure from Bid Kaptinski. Nothing. They were both teammates in that 27, uh, 207 uh, team. Here is the first save. The second save from Vincent Girard. He's a real head the ball, isn't he? He doesn't care. 53% saves. Difference between the teams right now. Difference between the teams right now is Vincent Gérard. Richardson, Simone. As you see, good save, good save. Right down his throat, but he had to make it. Now, here's Lagar, here's Diocas. Gio's free, but he doesn't see him, doesn't need him. Oh, another save from Vincent Gérard. Here's Simone. Is this game going to stop at all? The speed they're running at, it's unbelievable. Susi goes one on one. Shot, missed. Here's Dumoulin. They break again. What is going on? Will you slow down? No, they won't. Lagarde goes up. He misses. Timeout called. Two minutes. Oh, dear me. The sweat is absolutely pumping off every commentator in this arena. Just watching the game, it's we're breathless. Now, has he gone for uh, seven meters as well for inside defending? Kuna's back on and plays a Gio. Is that Richardson has got another two minutes there, is it? I think it is, which means it's his second two minutes of the game. He's on a disqualification already after 18 minutes. Richardson. Good goal. Good goal, Lazarov. They needed him. Yeah, he's had two two minutes, has uh, Melvin Richardson. And he hasn't had a shot. He hasn't even scored a goal. So, the power play is with Montpellier. The empty goal or is with uh, Nantes. The empty goal is with Montpellier. The score is 10 to 8 and a chance for Nolte to close the gap. Slower build up handball. Susi. Bach, one on one, goes. Down goes Fabregas in the middle. Susi looks around. Ball goes to Simone. Simone to Gigu. Gigu is looking for a bit of movement for the line player. Doesn't get it. He goes alone. Ball to Tukanovicius. Ball to Susi. Ball to Kvit Kaptichnik. They're still running. Hannes over pass. Play. Get a ball! What a ball! Kaptinsnik to the movie, Diego Simone. They are like leaves blowing in the wind. They never stop. There's always somebody running off the ball. Always a player looking, active, even if the ball doesn't come to them. And they have a three goal lead. There's got to be a goal here from the wing if they get it out. They don't really. And the foul is on the window. I think he was looking for it. 27 seconds left in the power play. Don't remember a player up here. Lagarde, Lazarov, Yokas, Lazarov. Oh, nearly lost it. Klein's going to go near post. And that's the goal he needed to settle the nerves. And he's already winding everyone up, milking the applause a little bit too early. He's got to be calm. He's got to focus. Where did he go? Waited. Yeah. Waits for Gerard to go for the top. And he goes just past the arm. There. Brilliant. You know what, Klein, he's always going to go 100% with every shot. There's not going to be much finesse about it. Doesn't matter. It's a goal. 11 9, 2 in it. 20 minutes, 26 seconds gone of the game. And it feels like there are more goals scored because it's been played at such a pace. Simone, Hock, Tukanovicius, Gigu. Simone breaks in, breaks out. The truck goes alone. He hits. I think nine meters to the referee. Yellow card against Lazarov. Complaining, it would seem. Quick shot of uh, MAA just looking on, bemused.
Nazarov so happy about something. I'll tell you, the atmosphere in here is amazing. Zikanovic's Simone. Simone tries to break through alone, trying to do it all on his own. And he's not going to get through the rock, Rio, and uh, the window as well. Well, Pellier fans giving the referee the bird. They won't pass a play and they want it now. Here's Simone. Simone! Nothing. Nine metres again since the referee. Still no pass a play. And there it is now. The truck, six passes. One, two. The truck, three, four, five, five. One, they've won. They've won pass. They've one pass, one shot. Kigu wants the back three. Ball to the truck. Blocked. And over the end line. Still pass of play. Dominic Klein still asking the crowd for reaction. Now he concentrates. Now he's watching. Ball is to Simone. He's got to shoot. Oh! In the end The maestro! Unbelievable! That is incredible. He's, he has no right to score that. The tournoi back on, three goals down. Lagarde in the center. Lazarov, Lyokas, Lazarov. Oh, Lazarov. He's so casual. And yet he scores. Gigu's already gone. No chance to see that in action replay. The truck. Gigu in the center. Susi in the left wing. Tipenovicius. Side steps. Ball to port. Ball down to Vitkov Tichnik. He's being watched all the way by his former compatriot in Kiel, where they won the uh, 2007 Champions League together. Meantime, Montpellier take a timeout. Let's listen in on Kanaye. Had a great stop there. The save that Vincent Gerard made with his head came from a 98 kilometer an hour shot. I don't think he even blinked. 98 kilometers an hour to the head, you don't blink. Do in on the line now. Double line, they're playing. No right winger. Port goes down deep. So 4-2 attack. Here comes Tukanovicius. Ball to Mamdu. Brilliant ball. Round the corner. Really good play. Switching up the tactics. Kiu plays it quickly to Lagarde. Lagarde to Miokas. Linus and Fancy going one on one with uh, Port. Goes out to Lazarov. Lazarov, of course, won here with uh, Barcelona, but he's also lost here at Barcelona, so, you know, he's been up and down here. Dominic Klein won it twice here with Kiel. Lazarov, back to Miokas, three is open, doesn't fancy it. Simone, in fairness, closed it all quite quickly on the wing. Bok doing his job. The truck and Fabregas, the centre block. And it is uh, Mamdou out there in the left wing defending on Lazarov. Lagarde, Lagarde, oh! That's a great goal by a great young player. 
look at the hang time and look at the direction of the shot. Takes it away from the goalkeepers and the defence. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. He's actually over Trukhanovic when he shoots that. He's over his hands. And then Vincent's expecting the far post, and he goes near post, 13-11. Port, Diego, Kigu, back to Diego Simone again. Ball with uh, Trukhanovic now with Port, now into the line to Mamdou. And Oscar was actually going to let it go, and uh, Angel called it. I think it's probably the, the goal line referee, referee is probably just about right for maybe a, that hold there on Mamdou, he deserves the free. Nine metre ball, Mamdou with it. Zekanovic's Subane. Oh, they tried to go for the quick one. They lost it. Klein picks it up. Looks, finds Lagarde. They went for the little sneaky double pass there. It didn't work out. Lagarde goes up. Ball in. Guillaume wasn't ready. Ball is broken to Port. Port looks around. Oh, someone's gone down in a heap. I think it's Lazarov. And in the meantime, Hashem Mabdou scores. And it's a three-goal lead. It's not. It's Lagarde who's down in a heap. Fell over someone. That's a great bit of defending. And look who finishes it. Mamdou up, makes the defensive uh, block or touch and finishes it. And they trained this morning. I remember when I played handball and, and the coach would ask you to train on the morning of the game. And you, you were like walking wounded. It was incredibly difficult to do, and they've done it in the biggest arena, in the, in the biggest club games in the world. They've trained the morning of both games. That's Montpellier, by the way. Meanwhile, Tournai has a little, uh, has a little go. Fabregas has a little bite of them, and the referees decide that's going to be a seven-meter shot. And Lagarde is in trouble there, and he's punching the chair, and that's not a good sight. Now, of course, they've got Claire to bring on, if he is injured. I think he's, uh, he's just uh, warming up, getting himself ready, no, he's on. So, Man Lazarov now the gap to two again, facing Portner, fakes him. Oh, save, Portner! Lazarov can't believe that! Save Portner, and off he comes. Well, he goes the side that he's got now. Then he steps in. That's a lovely, lovely technique from the goalkeeper there, and a lovely save. 14-11, 27-19 gone in the first half. Simone, Tukanovic's, Pigou, Simone, the truck, Port. Kapucznik, double line, Simone's in, now he's out again. Now the truck has it, now it's with Simone. Now it's with the truck, back, no, back to Simone. Simone, hand is up a pass of play. They've called a number in there, ah, oh, Super Bowl! Oh my goodness me, you cannot switch off with this team. You actually cannot switch off. You think you've done enough, and suddenly, boom. Look at that, three North players drawn to the ball. And one pass, and Mamdou is wide open in the middle. That's actually terrible defending from North. But great vision from Trukanovic. Miokas, ball to Claire. Well, they can't let this gap get much bigger. Oh, he breaks through, that's a great goal. And Poch is down on the floor, but it's his own fault. He was trying to hold on to uh, Claire. And he broke through. Good advantage by the referees. Watch it again. Yeah, that's great advantage by the referees. Good power from Claire. Porch got let go of him. He does. Claire scores. 15-12. Very nice. Nice game. 
nicely balanced. 1.15 to go in the first half. Not very much in the ascendancy at the beginning, but right now, Montpellier, certainly the better team. Bort, Simone, Bort, they've lost it. What are they doing? They're over-egging the pudding. It's going to be, no, it's a goal. They completely, they completely over-egged the pudding, Montpellier. They had the opening and decided they needed another pass. Here, he's got the opening. No, another pass. Corvindo breaks. Classic Nantes, and he doesn't make a mistake into the top corner. Two goal game, 15 13. Now, Rockfilio and uh, Simone are down after what seems like a clash of heads. And. Uh, looks to me like he's okay. Maybe a little bit of blood. The Rock is just, uh, it's, it's, the Rock is icing himself down, but Diego needs uh, needs a little bit of help. Yeah, a little bloody nose there. Will be okay? Well, it was a clash of heads, all right. He's claiming a push, but I don't think there was here. Oh, there was. There was by Tuna. He's right, Diego. Gotta say. Just there. Oh. Down he goes. I really hope he's, all his teeth are still there, you know, and his nose is okay, because he's such a pretty boy, right? And I'm not joking about that, he's such a good looking guy. He's like a poster boy for handball, you know? And uh, it was always my biggest fear, because I was quite a good looking young man in my day. And it was almost my biggest fear that I would break my nose or lose some teeth. And in one game, I actually broke my nose. And I remember running off the court, crying, Wondering would I ever, would I ever be good looking again? <laughs> That's a true story. Don't know why I'm telling you in the uh, the gold medal match, but anyway. Diego, get well soon. Bort is on. Richardson's on. The truck is on, and up goes Richardson, and he scores a goal. Filio's off. 16, 13, 23 seconds left in the game. Don't need a goal here. Yokas to Claire. Ooh. Almost lost that one. So, 13 seconds left. What's the game plan? Is it to Turna? No, it's to Gurbindo. Now it's Turna. It's brilliant. Nothing says the referee rebound. Oh, they said it's inside. I can't believe it. They didn't give Claire the chance to get the rebound. What a ball from Gurbindo to Turna. And Turna, who was absolutely unbelievable yesterday, is having a bit of a nightmare today. Look at after a ball. Shot. Great save, Jahar. And who's inside? What a save. He's 0 from 3 anyway, Tourna. I mean, you think yesterday, well, he can't be that bad in the second half, that's for sure. He was absolutely brilliant yesterday. Seven or eight goals, I can't remember. And today, hasn't had a sniff, but in fairness, 41% uh, save ratio. That's a game winner right there, uh, Vincent Gérard. Cyril Dumoulin's done well, but he's only on 20%. They need to up the game, Nolt, because right now, Montpellier totally in control of this, this gold medal match. I was going to say this semi-final. This gold medal match, the crowds just making their way out. 16-13, good start for Nolt, but as you see, Montpellier took over, and they're 67% scoring, 54 for Nolt, 46% saves versus... 20%. And then technical faults, you would expect a lot from both these teams the way they play. Second half is coming up in 13 minutes 47 seconds exactly. We will back with you live, so please do stay with us.
Well, we rejoin you now live for the second half of the gold medal match in the Lanxys Arena. The crowd's just trickling back in, 1.49 left in the halftime break, and the teams have been back quite a long time, so the coaches obviously had nothing to say. If I was the coach of Nantes, my advice to Tourna would be put the ball in the union bag. Three shots, three misses. It's not good enough for a guy who had such a great game yesterday. But uh, meanwhile, on the other side, Fabregas, one of the star players we told you to watch out for, he's four from four. And it's the timing of the, the movement of Montpellier really stands out to me. And the fact that each player looks dangerous, even when they look like they're on it's a decoy run. And so they're always winning the defense, they're always making the defender think, this ball could come my way and they just keep the ball alive all the time. It's incredible to watch. And just when you think nothing's gonna happen, they find a pass, they find a shot, and that's why they're leading by three goals, 16 to 13. And the Blue Foxes are happy. That's the fan club of Montpellier Hamble. And uh, three goals up, they start with the ball, Montpellier. Playing from right to left, all in white. In defence, waiting for them is Klein from the left wing. Claire, Rock for Leo, Leo. For the window, Balaguer, and in goal is Cyril Kibuna, who right now is on four saves from 20 shots. 20%. Now, Gerard, he's on 43%. And of course, the penalty save from Porter pushes them all the way up to 46% save ratio. And they start with pretty much the same team that 
start of the game and uh, has played most of the game. Fabregas on the line with the ball in hand. Gonna play it to, to Diego. Diego then has outside him Valentin Poff. Outside him again is Nick Kapitschnik. Then Kukanovicius on the left and it is Ibu on the left wing. Kukanovicius in the left back position, I should say. Gerard, of course, as you'd expect. Ready to rock and roll. A little bit more aggressive defending from Renault at the start. Kukanovicius. Tries to go through, attacker foul, brilliant defending there by Gobindo. Read him like a book, blocked off the run, and non start with a plus in the column. That's a good decision. Lazarov in attack now. In the case of Gobindo, and Eskimo Hansen, the big Norwegian, and the left back, powerful shooter. Powerful man, Puck steps out to block the run. Now Espen Lee Hansen goes alone, and he scores! Good run by Espen Lee Hansen, and a good shot. And they're on the board in the second half, and it's a two-goal game. Higu, Sukanovicius, Higu in the centre. Lovely ball, ball is over, stolen again, Gurbindo again. That's the second plus for Gurbindo in this, in this half. There with the ball, off he goes. And on comes Espen Lee Hansen. Balague says, just wait. Good steal, Gobindo read it again. Lazarov pulls uh, Susi wider out of the centre. Oh, Lazarov just about picks it up. Then ball back to Espen Lee Hansen. Now with uh, Claire. Claire stopped by Paul. So Susi in this left back defending position. Still, Chukanovicius and Fabregas in the defence in the central block. Lazarov, Espen Lee Hansen, that's why. Had a bit of rush of blood to the head there after the first good shot. Went for another one, Gigu breaks it to Poch. Back to Gigu. Now, goes alone, ball to Chukanovicius. But uh, is that Rock Falio out on him? And it's Tuna out on Gigu. Pulls him down, nine metre shot, says the referee. Tuna makes his way off. Gio makes his way on. It's large versus little for sure. Diego Simone comes off for a few words of advice from Kanae. I think I read the stat that they've played each other twice this, twice this season and uh, Montpellier have won both times in the French League. So, let's see what happens today. Right now, Montpellier is still the best team. Beautiful ball in, almost stolen. Not stolen, nine metre ball, says the referee. Pio did his job, still firm. Floor's a little bit wet, he's saying where he's standing. It is quite wet there as well. With a window on Simone. Simone, Tukanovic's ball out to Port, out to the wing, to Vid Katishis, great save. Pick up Aris Shoelaces by Claire. Dumoulin, great save, great save, and the rebound is even better. Gurbindo, Gurbindo to Lazarov. Lazarov turns around, comes back. Gio makes his way off, lets everyone know. Gurbindo makes his way off, lets everyone know. On comes Tuna. Tuna wants a little touch of the ball, gets a touch of the ball. On comes Esmond Lee Hansen, no touch of the ball. Now he gets it. Ball with Klein. Klein, one from two today. Lee Hansen, one from two today. Balaguer. Ball to Espen Lee Hansen! Oh, this boy's making an impact! Big Espen! Two for three! Got the ball, shot the ball. No chance for Gerard to move. Look at that. Right in the back. Oh, they've lost it! It's a one-goal game, they've lost it, the fast break is on, Claire to Espen Lee Hansen! Oh my word, it's a tied game! Can you believe what's happening? Espen Lee Hansen, I know what you're saying, who is he? The Norwegian comes out of nowhere, three from four, takes the game by the scrub of the neck, spins it in past Gerard.
Kenya and it's 16 at 4 minutes 15 seconds of the second half. Port, hit, took, plays it on, Port, ball out to Diego, Diego tries to break through, Vid had already come for it. Montpellier losing a little bit of style here. Look at the pressure they're putting on, and now the ball into, into Fabregas, and wide open again. They can't all chase the man with the ball, but that seems to be what they're doing. Now Montpellier take the lead again, Fabregas does his job, Tournai was lazy getting back. Fabregas eyes on the prize all the way. He's on five now. Esther Lee Hansen's only played five minutes and he's the second top scorer. Oh! Lazarov near post from the wrong side. Ball is played. Referees correct. They were offside. Have to come back. Look at this. Round the other side. Gap opens up. You don't give the Macedonian king. Kirill the Great, that much of an opportunity to score. In it goes, great goal. Evens at 17 again. Melvin Richardson now on the court in the centre position. And it's uh, Diego Simone in the left back and Tukanovic is getting uh, an ice pack on the bench. Bort to Richardson, to Bort. Look at the, look at the fight and it all players in there. Three of them, howling, howling port out of their nine meter area. Brilliant. What a game we have here in the Veloxia Chef gold medal match at the final four. Up goes Richardson, down goes Richardson. Nine meters, says the referee. Simone wants the ball played quickly over this side. Richardson goes up, Richardson scores. Amazing again. 18-17, Keo breaks it to Klein, Klein to Claire. Claire, one on one, goes into Gio. Gio's nailed in there, only nine meter ball, says the referee. Could have been worse, should have been worse. Looks like a bit of an assault, look at this. Oh my goodness me, Susie comes over and nails him. Good, tough, manly game, that's what the referees are allowing to flow here at the moment. Two now with the ball, out to Claire. 18-17, Montpellier leading. The floor is wet, the floor wipers are called on. Esben Lee Hansen, the forgotten man of Norwegian handball. He's been a journeyman for the last three or four years. Was up at Dunkirk, didn't work out. He's been here, he's been there, he's been everywhere. Suddenly gets a call in January, do you want to come to Nantes? Why not, says he. And there he is, three goals in the Champions League final. Can you credit that? Just shows you, fairy tales come true. And it's not just Bella Gulden. You know, happens all over the place. Claire, tries to break through, does break through. He's fouled, says the referee. Hand is up for passive play, no. Lazarov, ball to Tourna, Tourna tries to turn, attacker fouls, correct. Great, de great defence by Susi, and he breaks, look how quickly they're all gone. Sumane, Trukanovicius, and look how quickly Nolte are back. Tourna back in the centre block with Claire, but now Rockfellio moves them all across. Gets back to where he wants to be, which is on the left-hand side of the centre block. Oh. Richardson, Simone, Claire versus Simone there, that's interesting. Two very skillful, very quick at the feet players. Richardson absolutely nailed by Tourna, gets it back, breaks through, and it's an attacker foul, brilliant defending by the uh, wing and the, and the second block there. Lazarov, Claire. You can see them closing the gap before as uh, Melvin Richardson, Richardson decides I can go for it. Ball is out with Esperly Hansen. Does he go again? No, plays to the odd lovely ball into Balaguer. Oh, save from Vincent Gerard. Right in front of my nose. Here goes Port. Port. Simone. Simone. Plays it to Kapticnik. He slows it down and has to come all the way back out under pressure from Claire. And Balaguer makes his way back to the right wing defensive position. Well, it's up and down. It's like a seesaw this game. One goal in it. Balaguer didn't have a great angle. But you got to do better than throwing it straight at the goalkeeper. They can make a save, don't just throw it straight at him. Richardson in the centre, Port in the right back. Kapticnik out of the right wing. And Diego Simone is uh, in the left back position. He's really 
ball. What a ball, what a goal. How many times did they score a goal from that move in this Champions League uh, Final Four event? Unbelievable, unbelievable. That long pass, and suddenly the quick ball to the wing, it's a two-goal lead. Lazarov, Lazarov. Oh, going alone, and then hauled down, and it's gonna be a foul. And the 37-year-old Kirill Lazarov scrapes himself up off the floor. Almost uh, 10 minutes gone of the second half. Lovely ball to Tourna. Tourna turns, it's a foul. And again, Tourna can't score. He was going to miss whatever happened there. And uh, it's going to be a seven meter ball, which means Portner will come on. And that's why Simone is inside. Nice ball, Lazarov. Big hand up from Tourna. And maybe. You know, if he does a score today, if he gets a couple of uh, seven-meter shots for them, that's enough. So, Nicola Porto. I doubt uh, Lazarov will be going high again on this guy. Makes it. Oh, he saved it again! But this time, the rebound is picked up by Gervindo. That's two from two. We have a new penalty king. Four kilometers per hour, flicks out a leg. Even Isovic, that's the boy from Skirin, right? No, not even Isovic. Oh, maybe I'm right. Uh, Lazarov will be goes. Ooh, off the crossbar. Good shot, placed well, but not well enough. Diego Simone, talk, break it. Oh, attacker foul. Well, I think that that is a terrible decision. Klein breaks it down. Klein scores it. But I think that's a terrible decision. I think. I think Claire comes out with his shoulder on this. I'm going to watch it again, to be sure. And he absolutely nails Hawk. I think that is the wrong decision. It is not an attacker foul. I think Claire should be getting two minutes for this. I really do. And, and, and worse, maybe. Watch him. He turns away from him. There. My first view was right. And uh, Klein, I said it in the first game, when a guy goes down like that, maybe in the spirit of fair play. Look at it. Comes out, ah, it's, that's terrible. And I saw that the first time around, there was no way it was an attacker foul. Hits him with his shoulder, and that is a terrible, terrible decision. And I'm not, I'm not surprised he's, he's lying down there. I mean, that would ring anyone's bell. And it's like, when you don't know it's coming, and it, like, it's like whiplash. You get that hit? Looks okay. Well, it's good to see him getting up. I hope he's okay. That's terrible from Nicola Claire. That is absolutely terrible. And he knew what he was doing. Yeah, he is, I tell you. Oh, he's not happy. He's having a little look. But they really have got to check to see. And he's looking at the referee to say, did you not see that? And I'll tell you, they really need to check because you know what time it is, because you know what date it is, and who the president of France is. Who is the president of France? Is Sarkozy still there? I, I, I don't keep up to date with those kind of things anymore. I switched off my news feed uh, years ago, but my goodness me, I'm not surprised he's annoyed. That's absolutely terrible. Simone, Susi, Simone, Susi, a little bit of two on two. Now they wait, no, he goes again with Keo. Held up, Fabregas held up, two men. Nice play, good defence, no. And look at Rock Filio, staring down, staring down Fabregas. Having a little look at him, the glare. He's getting the rock glare right there. 1918 Montpellier leads. 11 minutes gone in the second half. Lovely ball into Gugu. How did he get in there? Just snuck in the back door, didn't he? Two goal leads. Gugu takes a little break from the defensive duties. The truck is on in the middle with uh, Fabregas. There's the ball again. Nice play. Lazarov to Claire to Lee Hansen. 
Kucherov goes sideways. Who does he look for? He looks for Dio. Foul, says the referee. And uh, Lazarov trying to be a bit clever there. Espen Lee Hansen might have been the better option, but uh, they get the ball in the end. There. Lazarov. Oh, nearly sells Susie down the river there with the dummy, and Claire's all the way through. Nine metres is the referee. Lazarov, Susie following him wherever he goes. Claire tries to break through. Foul again. Been one of the longest attacks of the game. Mamdou preparing himself for coming on. Jackson Richardson steals it. Yeah, great steal. Vid Kaftitschik is gone. And Espen Lee Hansen's with him, but Vid doesn't care. He scores, and the three goal lead is restored. And Claire out to climb. Back to Claire. They go again, and held up by Vid Kaftitschik. Arm around the neck, and uh, timeout call by Noel as Montpellier just step on the gas once again. Look at that. Melvin Richardson, a little hand in, steals the ball. And Vid Kaftitschnik, shot. The goal, great goal. Let's listen to the timeout. If I had to put my money on anyone right now, it would be on Montpellier. They just seem to have a little bit more a little bit more skill level. It's nothing to do with desire, it's nothing to do with anything. They're just, just better than Nantes at the moment. And they'll lead Lazarov, Gurbindo, they'll lead them all playing at the top of their game, or they're going to be in trouble, Nantes. Gurbindo, he can do it if he's given the chance. Lazarov again, back to Gurbindo, Gurbindo through! Clever play, and one back for Nantes. But, uh, Fabregas plays it to Simone, and we're off again. Lovely play, and it opened up so wide for the window all the way through. He makes no mistake. on the Simone, and he's using the footwork, keeping him out, nine-metre ball, Montpellier. The window two from two in the game today. You see ball, beautiful ball! Absolutely, genuinely magical ball from Susi to Fabregas. Soft, timed, look at that. That is just like, that's like floating a kite on a summer's day on the beach. Oh, ball into the wing, Balaguer! Lovely goal near post! Back in the game again! Two goal lead, Montpellier, 22-20. Look at that ball, Lazarov is really starting to play here. He does not want to lose. Simone, Richardson, Hawk is up and about on the bench. He must have answered all the protocol questions. Oh, stolen, stolen, Gurbindo, Gurbindo looks. 
finds Dubula. Lock Filio. Gurbindo. How did Barcelona ever let that guy go? I, 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 I'm, I've always said it, he's one of the best players I've ever seen. Never, wor never worse than a 7 out of 10. He's always a 7 out of 10. Sometimes a 10. All right, he doesn't look like the best jump shooter in the world, but it's just his reading of the game is so good. Lazarov! Up he goes, and in goes the ball, and it's a one-goal game again, 22-21. 16 minutes gone in the second half, gold medal match, 110 kilometers an hour, but it's the placement, it's the way he places it. Look at that. No chance, Gerard, and suddenly Gerard is dropping like a stone, 35%, whereas Dumoulin, well, no, he's dropping as well, 19%. Forget I said anything. Richardson! Oh, Richardson. That is just three from three. Melvin Richardson. Goal, is huge coming out of him there. And he still manages to shoot over him. Jokas, Lazarov, Gundo, Lazarov. Jokas, he's through. Penalty, says the referee. In fairness, he doesn't react any more than that looking for the two minutes. A little push here by Richardson on him, and Richardson was in trouble, so it's good. It's good that they didn't uh, react, or he could have been on a red card. He's already on two, three, two minutes. Now, oh, Gurbindo steps forward. Lazarov's been replaced after two missed penalties. And Gurbindo scores it just about, just about, and it's a one-goal game. than I thought. Mamdou. Making the Lucius of himself on the line. Richardson tries to get past... Uh... Oh, the ball is in, past uh, Pesh Malbec. And the referee has decided that that is a seven-metre shot. And Miocas having a word with uh, Guillo, who's just defending inside on Fabregas, and that is as clear as the nose in your face. The nose becoming a bit of a theme in this uh, country here today. I... No, I'm not so fair. Goalkeepers. Well, they like fine wines, aren't they? They just get better with age. Omeyer, 41, this guy's 39. Kapitichnik facing Arnaud Sifer. Steps into it. Oh, no chance, great goal. With Kapitichnik, lead is two again, 24-22. Six kilometers per hour. From a standing shot. Lazarov, Gurbindo, Jokas, who's Turna now, hasn't had the best game ever. He's to show in the last 12 minutes or so. Jokas, look at the speed of that. Turna turns. Oh, timeout call. Fabregas has gone. Two minutes exactly what Nolte might have needed. It's only a nine meter ball. But. Uh, Tuna Fabregas, one of those little stories within the big story. And he turns them inside and out. And it's, is it because he's between him and the goal that it's not a penalty? Two minutes, maybe that's harsh enough punishment anyway. So the power play for Nantes. Losing by two. Or should I say down by two. Lazarov. Oh no! What is he thinking? Simone, one on one with Dumoulin! Oh! What a save! They needed it! Lazarov goes and Lazarov scores! And what should have been a three goal lead is only one! Oh, deary me! Oh my goodness me! Look at that from Dumoulin! He knew he'd saved it before he saved it! Watch it again! 
And then the breakdown from Lazarov. It's like he knew he was going to save it. And he saved it. Oh, power play. Still, empty goal for Montpellier. And Nantes coming back into it. Kigu is brought on to end and end. A bit of experience. Simone, Jukanovic's. Kigu comes off. On comes the goalkeeper. Bart loses it. But uh, Pesh Malbec can't argue there. And if he's not careful, Angel will be over having a little word in his shell like. It's a clear foul. Pesh Malbec has him around the neck. It's lucky he's still on the court. So he's playing in the number two position. Watch past him. But La Marseillaise reverberates around Cologne. Oh, he's missed it. Thought it went in. He's missed it. Thought it went in. He's missed it. 24 23. And still, let's have a look again. Rattled the net. Oh, just went over. Now, chance with 10 minutes remaining, 21 seconds on the power play for Null to equalize. Lazarov to an up penalty. No! Can you credit it? A penalty! Oh, the pain and anguish of being a defender in handball. Turna looked like he'd nothing to do. Ball in. Oh, it's clear. Just before the shot, the little tug. Brilliant defending. A brilliant referee, I should say. Not Montpellier won't be uh, happy, but that's clear. Now, Gervindo. Facing partner to equalize. Does it? He does it! 24-24. Don't get excited, please. Nine and a half minutes left to go in the game. And the power play is over. Full compliment from Montpellier. Oh, that save from that save from Tumoulin. That could be the game winner. They could have been three down. And then they've equalised. Oh, Simone, Simone, dancing around. Elvin Richardson, Diego Simone, Elvin Richardson. Oh, tries to go past Pesh Malbec, loses it. Nine metre ball, says the referee. They take it back out again. Vid Kaptitsa goes deep. Elvin Richardson, the rock comes out, gives him a little tug. Save. Nine metre, says the referee. This guy, this guy, Melvin Richardson, is an absolute eye opener. I've never seen anything like that. He's fantastic. Simone. Richardson. Oh, oh my word. He's absolutely outstanding. As the old joke goes, if he was a farmer, he'd be outstanding in his field. Ah, the old gags are still the best. Jokas ball in, turn out stolen. Montpellier in control. Fast break, Trukanovic's. He has to let him go. He keeps going. The truck, the truck makes it too. Le Camion. Oh, he kept on rolling there. 26 24. Montpellier step on the gas again. And they take the lead again. Not going for Tourna every chance they get. And it ain't working out. And won't go. Bindo goes through. Nine meters is the referee, and that hurt him. Had a nice little, nice little knee in the thigh muscle there, I think. Lazarov. Yokas. What's he going to do? Tries to go, plays it out to Dominic Klein. Dominic Klein tries to play it back to Lazarov, eventually gets it there. And timeout called. Oh, look, he's not happy one bit. Alti, he is not happy one bit. Oh, I don't want to hear this. I'm kind of scared, uh, to be honest. Uh, I think he's going to give them a, a good tongue lashing here. Olivier, you saw. Bonjour, là-bas, à gauche. Avec Dominique. 
Avec les semaines, il reste en deux à gauche. Toi, tu reprends la main. D'accord Tu reprends la main. Ok Attention, dans ton moment, tu vas sur le repli. D'accord Ok Ok Uh, my feeling is uh, Leocas is coming off, and I think that uh, Lee Hansen's coming on. Yep. They've got to use their power for the backcourt. Why they keep trying to drop the ball into Tournau all day is beyond me. But uh, let's see what happens. There you go. I told you he was going crazy. He was very calm in the timeout because he wasn't calm when he called it. 26-24. Seven minutes remaining. Lazarov. And is up a pass of play. Balaguer. That's going to be Hansen. Lazarov again. Ball out to Claire. Claire to Dominic Klein. Oh, attacker foul called. I cannot believe it. And it was Claire that called it. But it breaks to Mamdou. And Mamdou makes no mistake. What a great fast break. Three goals up. Six and a half minutes remaining. Look at that for a ball, and that, and that speed. Free throw. Fast break goal, six for Montpellier, four for Nantes. 27-24 the score. Claire. Lazarov tries to give it back. Football not called. Sumane breaks. This time, what will he do? Goes for the near post. And that's four. And that surely is that. As long as they don't over celebrate the fact that they've gone four goals up. But Tuna, well, he looks like it's already gone. Klein trying to rally the troops. But this is, that is painful for Nolan fans and joy for Montpellier fans. of Tuna. The crowd really getting into this. It's been a great final, I have to say. Lazarov, Claire. Claire tries to break through. Three throws is the referee. That's the Lee Hansen. Two, Lazarov. Lazarov up, over, and that's lost. Oh, Dominic Klein tried to pick it up inside, but uh, you kind of think that unless Something absolute miraculous happens, i.e. that uh, Arnaud Sifer, who's in goal now, in place of Tumoulin, can save five from five. Hopefully they have won this final, and deservedly so, because each time it looked like they could crumble, they came back and took the lead. Look at that, 12 technical falls versus 10. That's the way these two teams play, and I love it. Richardson. Ball to Gigu. Gigu held up. Nine meter ball. A little bit more time off the clock. Four and a half minutes remaining. And Gigu, he must be licking his chops. 15 years since he last won a Champions League. And he, he probably thought, oh, I'm going to win loads of these. I'm 21. And here he is, 36. He's had to wait 15 years. Handles up a pass of play. Jackson Richardson. Diego Simone. And that, my dear friends, is that. Sit back, relax if you're a Montpellier fan and enjoy. Oh, there, pulls one back. But it's too little, too late for me. 29 25. Of this team. Oh, good save, Arnaud Sifer, that's one. Not enough. 
can't be enough. We're not going to see another miracle at uh, Cologne, are we? Espen Lee Hansen, could have been though. Espen Lee Hansen comes back, looks for Claire and loses the ball. What is he doing? What is he doing? Did Kaptichnik runs, then runs back, knows to waste a bit of time. And there's another one, Vid Kaptichnik, 2007. 11 years ago, Vid was 22, probably thinking. Loads more of these to come, and he's had to wait 11 years. Oh, breaking through, save, see fair, but a nine meter, or uh, seven meter called by the referee. Good save by Cifair, he's doing his part. Two and a half minutes remaining, and really nothing left to discuss, although, although uh, Thierry Ant is discussing as much as he can. Good captain Schmidt stepping forward to take it, facing Cifair. Oh, good fake. And he scores it. And they are hopping up and down on that bench. Up goes Claire. Great save, Vincent Gérard. With only two minutes, 20 seconds remaining. And I'm just looking along names here that are going to win their first Champions League, much as Kigo did all those years ago. Richardson, 21. Fustan, 23. Susi, 25. Bunfall, 25. Dukanovicius, 24. Fabregas, 21. I mean, if you could keep this team together, you just wouldn't know where they would go. Diego Simone, 28. Diego. Richardson, Simone! And you gotta say, they have been well worth the win. Espen Lee Hansen, all to Dominic Klein. Dominic Klein scores it. But for right now, you're just going to get goal on goal. There's no way Montpellier are letting five goal leads. Well, 31 26. Play? No. Gamdu, ah, oh, it's just... When it's your day, it's your day. And look at that man. So long in the wilderness, Montpellier. But right now, they can really enjoy themselves. The table officials telling them to sit down. Why would you bother? They're after going to win a gold medal in the Champions League. Let them celebrate. Doesn't happen that often. Just ask Kibu. Just ask Kanaye. 30 seconds remaining, and they have to play it out. And I feel for Thierry Alti, I really do. But in the second uh, year of the Champions League, to get to this situation, and they're just dribbling the ball around, and they're just shaking hands with each other. The bench is dancing, he's crying. Look at that, that is a beautiful, beautiful moment in Hamburg. Well done, Patrice. Well done. The buzzer's gone. And they are champions. Montpellier, top of Europe, top of the world. And that man there. What an amazing achievement. Champions in 2003, since then. Not much to celebrate. So happy for him, for Gigu, for Kapticnik. And for all these young players who have been together for a lot of years. Baptiste Bonfond. Mathieu Crevy, who is uh, not with the team due to injury. He's been there through the bad years. Afkua didn't make it onto the squad today. I mean, Koch, Simone. And then you look and you say the likes of Trukanovic just comes in and they find, well, they don't find Melvin Richardson, but they bring him in because it suits the way they play. And suddenly, you think to yourself, this is a team. And when you think about it, 
come from Group D in the Champions League to then have to play the second place team in Group A, beat them, then to beat Flensburg, then to come here, beat Varder, and then to beat O'Neill, well, their club from their country in Nantes. Not easy, it's absolutely wonderful. And there he is, at least Coach since 1990, whatever. And he's brought this lovely bunch of young men together. They're gentlemen, they're, they're a credit to their club. They're really, really good, very nice boys. And you cannot but feel happy for them. And at the same time, feel sorry for Nantes. A club on the rise, doing everything the right way. They just didn't have it today. 32-26, but Thierry Alti and Alberto Entrenios are doing a magnificent job down there. Just remember, they hosted two EHF Cups and lost them both, the finals, I mean. Their fans are tremendous. Their fans are still waving their flags. And they're in dreamland. Second season in the Champions League, and they managed to get to the final. That in itself is a dream ending. The silver medal to take away is not such a bad thing as we see pictures of them all moving along and talking to each other. A lot of love there. We saw the back of Salina's head. He's uh, going to become assistant coach of the women's team in Nog. So good luck to him. They didn't make uh, history today. But they certainly made an Ash story, that's for sure. Because the team that didn't believe they would make it this far did. But the winners and reserved winners today are Montpellier. And they celebrate with the Blue Foxes. Amazing game, really tremendous. And if we look along the stat sheets, Nicola Porter on penalties, 40%. 33% for Vincent Gerard was fantastic. Simone scored 6 from 7 today. Vigo 3 from 3, Richardson 4 from 5, Katixi 5 from 6, Barber got 6 from 6, Mamdou 5 from 5. Which meant that basically, when they got in the position, nobody missed. And that was the difference in the end. Because Tuna couldn't find anything today. 3 from 4 climb, good game, Nicolas Clare 2 from 3. Yoko's 2 from 3, Super, um, 4 from 4, Gurbindo, 4 from 8, Balaguer. There's your Estimate Hansen, 4 from 5, 6 from 9, Lazarov. And that, those little misses in 100% opportunities make all the difference. Ryan leaves with a silver medal in his pocket. Special mention to him. He... Uh, won't go away as a Champions League winner when he heads off into the sunset, back to the house he built in Bavaria. Eshmael Beck, he'll have better days. He's only 22 years of age. Luna, he'll have better days. He's had better days, he's only 24. And sometimes the pain of losing is what you need to push you forward. Montpellier are away to my left, celebrating with all of those fans. And away to my right, as the team from North. And interestingly, Auntie still having a chat off camera with Tuna, explaining to him what may or may not have gone wrong. He's been tremendous. And he's just wound up the entire crowd over there. Took the microphone off someone and went for it. So there's the final result. Uh, it says 32-27 on your screens. 32-26 is what I see in the, uh, in the arena. But 32-27 uh, uh, looks to be the final tally. The arena will go into darkness now as uh,
the last part of the big show that is the Velux CHF Final Four will take place. Look at that man, how happy must he have been. And just imagine that the club kept faith with him over all that time when there wasn't much happening. Initially, they were winning the championship in France, but even that dried up. And when you see the pain that they suffered last week in the French League when they lost away to uh, Saint Raphael, which means Paris will probably win the league next week. Just a few more moments, ladies and gentlemen. This is uh, been an amazing achievement. So the closing ceremony is about to start. I mean, you just can't see enough of that smile. Coming down, I, I was getting a cup of coffee today in the, in the foyer in the hotel, and he walked past me, and I've never really seen him smile. He's oh, he always looks quite serious, and he had this beaming smile on his face all day, just walking around. The fact that they'd gotten there was probably, you know, the reason why. But maybe he knew something I didn't, and uh, they've done it again and uh, beaten Nantes for the third time this season, and with it, have taken the gold medal in the Velux EHF Champions League. They are the Velux EHF Final Four champions of 2018. And people in pub quizzes all around the world, when asked who won the 25th anniversary edition of the Champions League, the answer will be Montpellier Handball.